Thank you once again. My name is Mr. Charles Fonikin. In this video tutorial, we are to discuss on working voltage in capacitor. In terms of capacitor, each of the capacitor they have a specific voltage that they can work with, and and each of them they have a, 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 a the capacitance as well. Last week I we discussed on a unit of capacitor being standard unit of capacitance. So in this week we are to discuss on working voltage of a capacitor. So please, before I proceed, if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, comment, and like. So the working voltage is another important uh, capacitor characteristic. Is another important um, capacitor characteristic that defines the maximum continuous voltage with DC. This DC is direct current or AC. This AC is alternating current that can be applied to the capacitor without failure during its working life. What I'm, what I'm saying here is the working voltage of a capacitor is very important. It means this will determine how effective capacitor will work. The, 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 the voltage that it can be able to carry during its process in each of the circuits. So in that case, let's move forward. Now, generally, the working voltage prints onto the side of a capacitor, but it refers to it as, refer to it, DC working voltage. This, this WVDC is sent as working voltage direct current working voltage direct current now you know each of the capacitors they have a specific voltage that they can carry and it is printed or written on their body to specify or for you to know that this capacitor is it has 400 volts it has 200 volts it has 50 volts it has 35 volts and so on and so forth so that is how it is. From that body of the capacitor, you will now know that, yeah, this is the capability, the voltage of this capacitor that it can carry. So that is why it is written on its body, which is referred as DC working, working voltage, VNWVDC. So, so in that case now, the DC being, being direct current and alternating current, DC and AC voltages, and DC and AC voltage values are usually not the same for a capacitor. That one, that one is true. DC and AC values are not usually not are usually not the same for a capacitor as the AC voltage. Being alternating current voltage value referred to the RMX. This this will be treated immediately. RMX means room mean square value and not the maximum or peak value, which is one one point four one four times greater. Now with this now, I will use this to explain briefly this. Arrow MS. I will treat it immediately. Now, in this case, there is a difference between the DC and the AC. I have treated the AC and DC current. The difference between AC and DC current. AC current is different from DC current. But we are, what you are discussing right now is in terms of capacitor. Now, in terms of capacitor, usually we know that they are not the same. The AC and DC are not the same so in that case let, let's look into it now let's 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 look into the arrow m s square now the same thing now look root main square that is the full meaning of arrow arrow m x root main square can also be defined for a continuously varying function in terms of an integral of the squares of the instantaneous values 
during a cycle. Now, in this area now, this root, this root mean square is try to crystallize in times of physics. This one is in times of physics. If you are a physics student so far, this one is in times of physics. The root mean square can also be defined for a continuously varies varying function it means whatever thing that that involves to varies it means either it increase or decrease that is here in terms of physics the value might increase it might also decrease in terms of what integral of a squares of the instantaneous values during a cycle so now let's go straight to let go straight to the main work of it now for alternating electric current for alternating electric current arrow n x is equal is equal to the value of the direct current get it right for alternating electric current arrow m x is equal to the value of the direct current that we produce the same average power dissipation in a resistive load. You get that? And for alternating electric value, eh? for alternating electric current, root main square is equal to the value of the direct current that will produce the same average power dissipation and resistive load you know wherever you have seen a resistor wherever you have seen a resistor connected definitely in any circuit in any motherboard is in our laptop um, desktop and uh, as well as pan top as well as uh, our smartphones and so on and so forth Wherever you see a capacitor on any of the circuit, once because there must be an active and a passive. Wherever you see a capacitor, or maybe a diagram that involves a capacitor, there is some legs of the capacitor will be connected either to the input or to the output, and that output it might also or it may also involve a resistor on that particular circuit. That is why you see that. In this area, for, for what I'm explaining here, I say for a for alternating current, for alternating electrical current, arrow MX is equal to the value of the current that produced the that produced the same average power dissipation in a resistive load. That one, this one it involves resistor and every other component that makes up of that particular circuit. That is the explanation. Now, in this area, in this area, this area is telling you that the, 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 the value are not the same. The value are not the same. Now, in this area, they, they are telling you that the value, they produce the same value power dissipation in times in, in a resistive load. But from what I explained, from what I discussed here so far, here so far, the resistive. From what I discussed here so far, which I said the DC and DC voltage are are usually not the same for a capacitor as as the AC voltage referred to as RMX. Now, I have used this ROMS to differentiate it for you to understand the complete different aspect of it in case if you are confused. Now, let's go to another area. Now, also, the specific DC working voltage is valid within a certain temperature range. The specific, the specific v, um, DC voltage in... Um, the also the specific dc working voltage is valid within a certain temperature range and normally from negative 30 degree celsius to 70 degree celsius which i told you i will discuss of the other 
and capacitor unit of and capacitor i told you the how how it is if it require uh, so, so 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 and so so this definitely that is what the capacitor that you will use on that circuit so in this case now what i'm trying to explain here now the range is the specific being the dc voltage is it has a a, a, a certain temperature ranges normally from negative 30 degrees Celsius to 70 plus 70 degrees Celsius and any DC voltage in excess of its working voltage or an excessive AC rainbow voltage may cause a failure which means that if you are working on a capacitor and the voltage is 10 volts and the current is exceeding more than that 10 volts it means that that capacitor will have an issue it will it will just destroy it immediately it has a failure from there the circuit will not work effectively because the capacitor is no longer doing its job because each of the each of the component being the passive and active uh, and, the, uh, and the active component they have their own each specific job they are doing including in that active and also in that passive that combine to make up of that Circuit. They have their own specific work and, and their own specific function and if each of them is not functioning properly it means that that circuit will not work efficiently or properly as well. So in that case in, in times of when the voltage is exceeding beyond the maximum voltage of that capacitor it means the capacitor will have an issue. So in that case, if you are working on it, always always try to know or check if the capacitor is in good shape or is not in a good shape. So in that case, it follows therefore that a capacitor will have a longer working life if, if operated in a cool environment. If operated in a cool environment and within a trait, that is just what I discussed uh, on the on my last video and um, based on the, the environment and the temperature aspect of it I discussed it so far based on the now in this case now that I'm telling us that the the capacity the capacitor will work it has it will work, have a long life it if the capacitor is in a cool environment being if the environment where you kept where the capacitor is kept is Cool, cool or is good or is well is is okay with the capacitor it has more long life to work within that circuit but common picking voltage are let's check about the voltage now look at the voltage though this one are not the only voltage aspect of it there are also other ones that i couldn't um, added here but this one is just for an example for you to understand it very well as well. It is printed on the capacitor body, which I have already said before. Here we have 10 volts, we have 16 volts, 25 volts, 35 volts, 50 volts, 63 volts, 100 volts, 160 volts, 250 volts, 400 volts, and the 450 volts and 1000 volts. And they are all printed on the capacitor body for you to know each of their maximum voltage that they can work with thank you once again for watching my video please if you like my video subscribe to my channel comment and like thank you once again see you next week